right, this line right here from the Golden Apple Archipelago might have just revealed how Scaramouche is going to become a playable character. In this video, let's talk about what we know about Scaramouche so far, what his connection to Kazaha is, and what we could potentially see happen in Sumeru that ultimately ends up giving him a banner. Now we know that in order for characters to get banners, they need to be in the Traveler's good graces. So something clearly needs to happen with Scara's character development in order for us to have some resolve with his story and have somewhat of a decent relationship with him. So we're going to start off this video going over everything that we know about Scara from his lore in the Husk artifact set, and then we're going to analyze his relationship with Kazaha, which we learned a bit about during the Iridori Festival in 2.6. And then we're going to leave off with speculation for what is to come with his story and how he might get that banner. So if you're excited, give this video a like and let's begin with the husk lore, starting at the very beginning. 500 years ago, when he was created by A. After the events of Conria, we all know how scared and anxious A was about what had happened during the cataclysm with the death of Makoto. So she ends up creating a vessel for her Gnosis, ultimately allowing a puppet to have the Gnosis instead of her. Now we know from Venti's lines in his Archon quest that Enosis is an internal magical focus that resonates directly with Celestia itself. There's a lot of reasons why A wouldn't want that thing. We won't get into it in this video, but all we know is that she created Scara so he can hold the Gnosis, but unfortunately he was too fragile to handle it. She ended up watching him cry in his dreams night after night and ultimately deemed that he was unfit to hold it. Later on, of course, we all know the Raiden Shogun is created and she was actually able to function without a heart, meaning that she didn't need the Gnosis to continue on with the duties of an Archon. With the creation of her, Scara was put into a slumber, much to Yaimiko's dismay, who actually wanted her to get rid of Scara altogether. But A didn't want to do that because he was one of her own creations. The Gnosis was then given to Yaimiko to hold on to. Later on, and we don't know how many years later, but Scara wakes up. He's actually woken up by the Taratasuna people. He goes by a name that has now been even forgotten by himself, and they were honestly kind of unsure as to how to treat him because they knew that he wasn't really a human, but they also knew that he had this connection to the Shogun based on what he was wearing. These people ask for Scara's help in trying to get rid of the Tartagami sickness that was going rampant, and they ask him to go to Narakami, where he goes, and it's presumed that he meets with Yai, where she says that she'll go and send help. Now, I don't really know what happens after this, but this is when Scara is discovered by Yero, the first Fatui Harbinger, who then takes him out of Inazuma, where he joins the Fatui as the Balladeer. Now, this is where our actual gameplay comes in. We know in 1.1, I believe, he was sent out to Mondstadt by Piero for the Unreconciled Stars event, where he discovers that there is a false sky. And we know between the end of the Archon quest, where Yaimiko says that she had given the Gnosis to Scara in exchange for the Traveler. Between that and the events of 2.2, where Child says that Scaramouche has gone rogue with the Gnosis and he's been tasked with trying to find him. So all we know is that Scaramouche has taken this Gnosis for himself and has ultimately betrayed the Fatui. Now from the artifact set, we know that he tries to actually insert the Gnosis inside of himself probably because he was made to hold a heart. After he does this, he realizes that it did not contain any blessings, but was instead a sacrifice brimming with selfishness, hypocrisy, cunning, and curses, all wrapped in an amiable husk. So we go back to how he was when he was first created, where he would cry in his dreams while the Gnosis was in his quote-unquote heart. Now. It's for him to decide what to do with the Gnosis after learning this. It says, You once acquired the heart that you always dreamed of, but it was but a mere prop for lies and deception. Now you will finally obtain what belongs to you. And this false construct of a body can at last aspire to power over this world. So what is it that he's going to finally obtain? 
what rightfully belongs to him. What is this thing that's going to give him power over this world? So with all of that said, right now, we don't know what the Traveler is going to do. We're leaning more on the fact that they don't really have a good relationship right now. The last time we came in counter with Scaramouche, this is what he did to us, right? But something needs to happen here. So let's move on to what happens at the Iridori Festival and ultimately what his ties to Kazaha are. Now, after he had woken up, he did end up befriending someone that worked at the Tenryo Commission who took an interest in swordsmithing. But this person ends up being killed by one of his superiors, and we know that this has something to do with the Riding Gokuden. After his friend's death, he starts seeking revenge on these people and targeting the Riding Gokuden. One of them being the Ishin Arts, which the Kayadara clan is connected to. Now, besides the revenge on his friend, this is also a direct insult to A right here, right? And Makoto as well. I mean, it's Makoto's blade that is the Muso Ishin. <laughs> it's basically where A is keeping her consciousness right now. Definitely an insult to A as well as some form of revenge for his friend. Now, after all of this happens is when the Kaidahara clan is basically like lost all of its status. So this is how Skara ends up being connected to the Kayadara clan and ultimately to Kazaha, who has basically, and from what we've really seen firsthand from the Golden Apple Archipelago quest, is that he has been dealing and has a lot of weight on his shoulders from the destruction of his family's clan due to this incident that was initiated by Scaramouche. Now, obviously, this happened quite a while ago, and Kazaha has just been dealing with the ripples of it, ultimately ending up becoming a wanderer, right? But we do know that during the Iridori Festival, Scaramouche was looking for some kind of clue relating to his past in Inazuma. We know this from going to the Tenryo Commission's warehouse, where we rummage through Kazaha's things, and it seems that Skarmouche has also had the idea in doing that as well. But we leave the Iridori Festival knowing that he is a problem that we have to deal with, that Ayato, Yaimiko are all very well aware of the situation, but now also Kazaha would even said something along the lines of hiring a detective to help him figure out who this person is. So Skara is gone from Inazuma at this point, and we have no idea where he is. Could it be that we're going to see him when we head on over to Sumeru? Definitely, definitely possible. So we know that from what has been leaked so far, that Skarmouche is going to be a playable character. He's going to be a five-star character. And that he is in the files with the name Wanderer, which is probably influenced by Kazaha, who is a self-proclaimed Wanderer, right? We know that he's going to get a boss fight. Going back to what he said about gaining power over this world in the Husk set makes me believe that we're finally going to figure out what it is that he has obtained that will basically replace the heart and give him the power that he's longing for, which could ultimately leave us with his boss fight. Now, since I said before that the character does need to be on good terms with the Traveler in order for them to be playable, what if Kazaha is there with us when this fight breaks out? and helps us deal with the aftermath. This line right here, the mirage is me, the empty flower pot represents the state of my heart. After going over everything we just talked about, this directly parallels Scaramouche and the emptiness in his heart, literally. Could we potentially end the Scaramouche storyline with something similar to what Kazaha is saying right now? getting rid of the past self, saying goodbye to him, understanding the story and moving on from it. This monologue that Kazaha is going through right now sounds like something you could literally say to Scaramouche. There's no future for those who linger on the past. All Scara has been doing up until this point has been lingering on the past, the seeking revenge for the ride in Gokuden, the whole ordeal with the Gnosis. And ultimately, we know for Kazaha that all he wants to do now is embark on a journey and continue to see the world as a wanderer. So pretty poetic. I think it is very interesting that we have Skara's new name as the Wanderer and how everything that we have seen from Kazaha's domain seems to really mirror 
was Scaramouche is going through. And this, of course, could put us on a path to repairing the relationship that we have with him to make him playable. So let me know what you think. How do you think this story of Scara will ultimately end? Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear it. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe for more Genshin content. And I will see you in the next one.